If you're lazy like me and you're always on the watch out of how you can optimize your workflow as a web developer, this is the right video for you. Today we're going to learn what Gulp is and how you can use it to avoid boring repetitive steps, especially in regards to deploying a HTML, CSS, JavaScript website. Before we start, around two years ago, Gulp updated from version 3 to version 4. If you see a code on Stack Overflow or somewhere else on the internet like this, where there is no function statement in the beginning, this is the old syntax, which is most probably not going to work with Gulp 4. So either install Gulp 3 or learn here how it's done with Gulp version 4. So what is Gulp? Gulp says, Gulp is a toolkit for automating painful or time-consuming tasks in your development workflow so you can stop messing around and build something. Gulp is also a lot referred to as a task runner. A couple of practical examples can be, with Gulp you can automate image optimization, copy files, rename files, uglify CSS or concat JavaScript files with just a command in the terminal. This is exactly what we are going to do today. Alternatives to Gulp, even if not directly, are Grunt, Webpack or direct npm scripts. Though for basic task automation, Gulp is widely considered the best option. The most use cases are the last steps like minifying or concatenating, which means combining files, to a dist or build folder before the deployment of your site. So here we have an almost finished project ready to deploy. We have a dist folder which is completely empty and we have the source folder with CSS files and nested folders um, and JavaScript files and nested folders too. We have a couple of images and our HTML files. So let's use Gulp to copy our HTML, optimize our image files and concatenate and uglify our CSS and JavaScript files. First, we wanna create a package.json file. To make this easier, we will call npm init. And for the sake of this tutorial, I will just click enter through here. Now we have our package.json file. We need the package.json file later to see our dev dependencies. So let's open up the terminal. The first thing we have to do is install Gulp globally. Then we cd to our project folder and install Gulp as a dev dependency. Now we can see our node modules folder and in our package.json Gulp has been added as a dev dependency. Now we want to create a gulp file.js in the root of our project. First of all, we have to know that there are top level functions like source and test. The source points to the file we want to use and the test points to the output folder. Another one is watch, which will watch files and folders for changes. But there are a ton of plugins out there you can use. Just Google gulp and whatever you need to do and it will pop up as one of the first results. So first we want to bring in gulp and deconstruct a couple of variables from Gulp. We will all use them later. So first, let's copy the HTML files of our source folder to the dist folder. We can use that with just the top level function, so no plugins. We're gonna use a normal JavaScript function and return the Gulp syntax. With source, we point to the source file, which in our case is source and all the HTML files then .pipe, which is a little bit like .then in normal JavaScript, which is an asynchronous function. So we'll wait till the beforehand function is done. And then we will use gulp tests to point to the output folder. To export that function, we will say export default, copy HTML. Save the changes. And now we can run gulp. Now we can see that our HTML files have been copied to the dist folder. The exports.default function is a default function for gulp, which in the terminal you then can call just gulp and it will execute all the functions mentioned here. But we can also have it as a so-called private function if we call exports.copyHTML and set it equal to copyHTML. So what we can do is go to gulp copyHTML and then run it. And the same thing happened. Let me just delete the folder so we can see. Now 
Now the files are copied as well. Now let's optimize our images. Again, we have a basic JavaScript function and we return source, all our images in the source folder. And we're gonna send it through the pipe with a plugin image min. Then the next pipe, which is the dest folder, so the destination folder, which should be dist slash images. Now, of course, now we have to first install the plugin. The plugin we are going to use is gulp image min. And remember, if you install anything with gulp, it should be installed as a dev dependency. Now the modules have been installed and we have to bring it in up here. And now export the function. By the way, we can call that whatever we want. That's not required by the plugin or by Gulp itself. So I could call that function one, two, three. Now let's save the changes. And what I can do is run Gulp image task. And we can see the images have been copied and optimized. So let's look at it. It's around seven kilobytes, whereas the normal image or the original image was more than 30 kilobytes. So quite efficient optimization. And the good thing about Gulp is if you run it again, it will not duplicate the images. It will just update them. And the same is true with the copy HTML function we did earlier. The only thing that's going to happen is it's going to update the file in the dest folder. So let's try that out here. Let's add an exclamation mark here. And if we now use the function, we're going to see the changes in the dist folder too. Now what we can do with the default option is put both functions in there. And we will do this like that. And now if we save that, we can delete the disk folder so we see exactly what's going to happen. And we run gulp. We can see that both functions have been executed. We can also use the function in series and then it will be like an asynchronous function where it, where it will wait till the first function has been finished. But we will use that afterwards. So let's now concatenate and minify our JavaScript files. We do that with this function where we first build source map, concatenate the files to all.js files. So this is the output file name. Then we use Terser to minify the JavaScript. Then source map again. This is how the source map plugin works. The source map write and init function come before and after all the other plugins. And then of course we're going to output it in dist, assets and the JavaScript folder. But before that, we of course have to install the plugins, which in our case is again a dev dependency, gulp source map, gulp concat, and gulp terser. That took me a while to figure out, but there is a very common plugin out there called gulp uglify, which is well known in the community, but this does not minify ES6. So that's why I recommend to use the terser plugin. Just this as a little side note. So we have the plugins installed. Now we have to bring them in. Concat, Terser, and Source Maps. Now again, export the function. And the last thing we have to do before we can run the function, we have to bring in our source. I like to use that with a variable. So our JavaScript path is this one. We could also do it like this. But let's use our created variable. And now it should work. Now we can see that our all JS and all JS map from the source maps have been created. Another thing is that we haven't had an assets and JavaScript folder before. So if Gulp doesn't find a folder, it will create it for us. Now we can see we have a minified version of our JavaScript files from the source. No matter if they have been nested in another folder or if they're directly in the JavaScript folder, because we specified that all the folders and all the JavaScript files should be in the source. 
So again, we took the source, we initialized the source map, we concatenated the files to an all.js file, we minified the JavaScript with the terser function, we wrote the source maps in the same folder, and we outputted the files in the dist, assets, and JavaScript folder. Now we can do the same thing with CSS, but with additional functions. Now in this function, we have a CSS path, which we will define up here too, which is in the source, assets, CSS, and then all subfolders with all CSS files. Then we will have the source map initialize function in the first pipe. We are going to concatenate the CSS files into a style.css file. And then we have a plugin which is called post CSS, which takes in other plugins for more functionality. Here we will have the auto prefixer and CSS nano to add the prefixes and to minify the CSS. Then we will write the source map in the same folder as the output folder and create the file in the output dist assets and CSS. So of course we have to install the plugins first, which is called post CSS, CSS nano and auto prefixer. packages have been installed and we have to bring them in up here. Save the changes. And now we just want to export the function. And now it should work. Now we can see that a folder has been created and we minified and concatenated all of our CSS files in one file. The last thing I want to show you is how we can create a watch task. A watch task will watch path, which, which we define here. Have an interval set up here. This is what, just one option of many options. And then we'll run the functions we will define here. And we define them as parallel. So one thing that we might want to do for our workflow is to put all the functions we have here in one function and then afterwards watch the functions we want to watch. So if we have changes, they will be updated automatically. So how we can do that is to change our exports default functions. And we put them into a series of first a parallel series of copy HTML, image task, JavaScript task, and CSS task. And after that is finished, we will want to run the watch task. So save that. Let's delete the disk folder so we can see what actually happens. And now we can run gulp. Now all the functions have been executed and we can see here that gulp is watching the files. So now here we see in the disk folder we have our assets, our CSS files and our JavaScript files. One thing we cannot forget is to check our index.html files and to change the respective links. In this example, we would change the JavaScript link to all.js because you remember we minified and concatenated all the JavaScript files into an all.js file. And now both index.html in the dist and in the source folder have the same functionality. And now what we could do is upload our dist folder to our server and we just saved us a lot of time instead of having to manually concatenate and minify our CSS and JavaScript files. So that's pretty much it. Those were just a couple of examples of what you can do. You can also do cache busting, SAS compiling, and much, much more. I will have a video soon where I show my workflow before I deploy a website, which uses just a little bit of Gulp in combination with the live SAS compiler. So make sure to subscribe to not miss that. I hope that video helped. See you in the next one.